two outside. Two up, spin in front of you. Watch him, clear the bottom. Six gets it's like oh, oh my gosh. Goodness gracious. Wow. Like Moore said, got into the six car. David Reagan. Oh. You watch the left side of your screen as Michael Waltrip's car hits the end of a cement wall, part of a gate through which passenger cars go to the infield. The car disintegrates upon impact. Somewhere in the debris and the rubble sits Michael Waltrip. Mark Newman slams the wall. Mark oh, man. comes Schrader, and Newman is in Newman. the air oh. and over. Ryan Newman, last year's Rookie of the Year, on oh the rear God. end, ripped from the car. Look at that thing lift up, Larry. Just takes off like an airplane. That's 3,400 pounds, folks, just lifting up in the air like a feather. And the right rear wheel digs into the dirt and tears the whole rear end loose from the car. Yeah, if the tire hadn't come off of the wheel, it probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have turned over like that. But once the wheel, the tire came off and it just had, it dug in and flipped it. down the back straightaway, still spinning, finally coming to a rest about halfway down the back straightaway. Talk to the ambulance, good news for Rusty. That is the kind of crash that is so scary to see that car go airborne and flip end over end, but it is, sometimes it can be the best kind of crash you can be in. And let me explain why. As long as that car is rolling, turning, not hitting anything, not stopping instantly, it bleeds off all that energy. They come through the trioval, Checkered is waving, Ernie Evan wins and Rusty spins and gets airborne and flips wildly right at the start-finish line, very reminiscent of his accident at Daytona. And he does touch him, that's and why around he goes. And that's one reason that Dale Earnhardt went down there. That's why he was so concerned, because he touched Rusty Wallace to start this situation, it looks like. And the car overturns about six or seven times, pirouetting on its nose, end over end, side over side, comes to a rest on its wheels between the start finish line and turn one. In the UPS car, there was some talk of whether the team whether the team could switch points. Whoa, whoa, oh, guys, whoa, 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 oh no, oh my gosh. I have never seen anything like that in my life. He hit that wall a ton. Oh my gosh. Off it, he look at that, that. look at that. Goodness. And That's, wave to the fans. My goodness. That says so much for these race cars. It says so much for what these racetracks have done with this safer barrier. That is unbelievable. Let's take a look. I think you're going to see him get loose the minute oh, he yeah. turns down into the corner. Yeah, and he's just, man, and that thing just absolutely. I will guarantee you that impact was well over 180, probably 185 miles per hour. We've already seen 199 or better getting in there going straight. Now that's a part of the racetrack. Oh, oh I, I, I can't even hardly watch that. It's a part of the racetrack, but Murray said was a little slick getting in. Not knowing if Michael changed his line a little bit, got a little too much into that speedy dry. Oh, my Lord. But that he walked away and waved to the crowd while walking to the ambulance after that impact is a great testament to safety of these cars and these racetracks today. If there's been any fans, if there's been anybody in our industry that has questioned the car tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this guy that walked out of that race car just a few minutes ago.